Hey guys, I'm Afik. Full time, I work in finance as a hedge fund trader, but I studied math and theoretical physics at Cambridge, and so spend most of my free time uh, pursuing independent physics projects. Typically, these physics projects are supervised by a major UK university or research institution, or collaborated with on by a nonprofit who's also interested in the stuff that I'm trying to do. Um, the areas that I've been working on recently are biophysics, biosecurity, and computational chemistry. And last year, I actually posted a video on some of the stuff that I was doing. So I wanted to give you guys an update on the progress I made and stuff that I built. Um, I also wanted to use this video to perhaps offer some advice on why you actually probably should try to do research outside of a full-time job at part-time, how you might go about doing that if you're interested in, in pursuing that kind of path, and um, some project ideas that I've had on uh, stuff that people can work on. So since we last spoke, uh, I managed to actually get a supervisor from a major university here in the UK. Uh, currently, my project is working on the spectroscopy of proteins and how you could use computers to predict basically the wavelengths of light that come back at you when you shine light on a protein. So right now, a lot of the stuff I'm working on is building tooling to do lots of computational chemistry calculations for a large number of small molecules. And um, one thing that's really good about this is that the university that I work with has actually let me use their high performance computing cluster to do experiments on. So as a side effect of this research, uh, I've actually written a lot of tooling and code that seems to be generally useful for doing computational chemistry calculations. And uh, as of now, I have at least three uh, research institutions that are interested in taking it over and, and using it, uh, which I advertise on Reddit. So as for the second project I'm super excited about, it's on biosecurity. So last, uh, last year after that video, uh, I actually started writing a blog to document some of my independent physics research. And one thing that I wrote a lot about was how I thought that there were loads of neglected and interesting problems in the field of biosecurity. Uh, this is super important because another catastrophic pandemic could really set humanity back uh, quite a long ways. And I actually think that there's loads of problems in the biosecurity field that are super amenable to part-timers to work on uh, outside of their full-time job. Um, so since I wrote that blog, I've been getting around 4,000 views a month on it um, with some nonprofits reaching out to me about some of the stuff that I wrote. And uh, right now I'm currently working on a project after getting some feedback that involves building retrofittable systems to allow my house to draft quickly increase the pressure inside of it uh, of filtered clean air so that when I open my door, um, contaminated air from outside can't get inside. Okay, so here are some of the things I've learned from trying to do research independently, uh, some thoughts and pitfalls and why I think it works. Um, so the first thing is that it is actually possible to work on meaningful things part-time outside of your job. And the reason why I think this is because, well, firstly, if you look at the state of academic funding right now uh, in the UK and the US, it's pretty bad. Like universities have got their budgets cut, um, policy is kind of shifting. And uh, the fact of the matter is that academic funding is tight. And so a lot of academics can't seem to take a lot of high risk projects on that potentially could be impactful because it might not lead to perhaps as many citations as they want if it's too outside of the mainstream. And the this is the kind of gap that I think individuals working part-time could really fill. So for example, something that I am excited about is uh, the more wingier, edgier ideas in brain physics and the quantum chemistry of brain proteins. And uh, this is something amenable for part-timers to do because uh, a lot of it is coding related, so you only need your computer to do it. And um, a lot of people just don't have time to work on it if they're in mainstream academia. So there's a supply of people who want to do things and there's uh, some demand. And it seems totally possible that there are impactful people working on this outside of the traditional academic system. Uh, the second thing that I learned is that there are actually loads and loads of problems out there just waiting to be solved. Uh, a lot of this 
I think is involved in just building tooling, like building software services to make things easier. And if you're already like a software engineer or you have coding experience, uh, this could be like perfect for you because you don't actually need to know the ins and outs of the whole context of the problem. You just kind of like have to build something that fits that micro problem that people are facing right now. And there you go, there's your contribution. Uh, there's a lot of, been a lot of debate about whether science is driven by ideas or by tools. And I really think it's both. And especially the engineering problems in tooling seem super amenable for people working part-time to work on. Uh, so the reason why I also think tooling is super valuable is that a lot of people just in, in academia from what I've seen to die from like a thousand cuts, death by a thousand cuts of maybe not having like a really well designed piece of software that they could use for a particular research problem. Uh, and I, I think actually building those tools would be like a super high leverage way to have pretty good impact. So something that I realized when I was doing my computational chemistry project was that there wasn't like a tool out there where I could like quickly label uh, the orbitals that I wanted to analyze over like a large volume of samples. So I just built it, um, posted on Reddit, and there seems to have been interest from other university groups on adopting it and using it. So yeah, I, I think it's totally possible for someone who wants to work independently to do so uh, and actually have like a non-trivial impact. And on the theme of neglected problems, I just think that there are loads and loads of neglected problems in biosecurity and pandemic prevention that are worthy of attention and kind of like the marginal impact of a part-timer would counterfactually be a lot better than no one working on it. Uh, so for example, one of the gaps that I think is valuable to work on is retrofitable devices for homes. Like there, there's a lot of uh, industries out there that kind of sell air purifiers and uh, sell sort of like tools to indoor monitor indoor air quality. But a lot of these are really expensive and finding cheaper ways to do something like that could be potentially highly impactful and is really interesting from a physics and engineering point of view to work on. Um, stuff like indoor air sensors, um, ventilation modeling, uh, for UVC modeling are all projects that don't really seem to be highly developed in that space and are completely tractable with someone with a very cursory knowledge of fluid dynamics and software engineering. Another reason why I think working on stuff part-time and independently is more and more possible is because there's been a recent influx of philanthropic funding going to people working independently um, and people outside of the traditional academia sphere. A lot of, I've seen a lot of this in like the AI safety funding community where there's there's been a lot of like sponsorship for people working on AI safety independently just on their computer. Um, if you look on like communities like uh, Less Wrong or uh, Effective Altruism, there's really been sort of like a drive of admission that there are people able outside of the traditional academic uh, community to do research and if you can get money for it, like why not? It makes everything a lot, a lot easier. There's also just been like a drive from the wider academic community to promote citizen science in general. Um, Terence Tao has talked about how he's used uh, citizen scientists before in solving large scale mathematical problems with automated proof solvers. So that's also another reason why I'm super excited about uh, people working on science, like alongside maybe like full-time jobs to pay the bills. Okay, so how do you actually like get started? Um, and what are some of the pitfalls that some I've observed some people make when trying to do physics independently outside of like an institution? Uh, my best sort of like advice is to try to avoid coming across or being like a quack or a crank. And this a quack or a crank is basically uh, someone sort of just doing physics that's wrong. Um, in isolation, like in their bedroom and sort of posting it online without any feedback, um, basically wasting their own time chasing ideas that are probably wrong. And I think to avoid this, um, you kind of have to just be really, really honest with yourself on what is like intellectually correct, what is actually true and just be really intellectually honest around what's verifiable and 
what data you have to support your own hypotheses. Um, secondly, is which is really important, is don't work on problems in isolation. You really want to be able to have a situation where you like have a supervisor or colleagues who are interested in the stuff that you're doing. You don't have to be associated with that institution. You just need to like have sort of an email group that you can say, okay, I worked on this. What do you guys think about it? Like, um, is this an important problem? Is this impactful? Is it wrong? How can I test? Uh, how can I test this? Ask those sort of questions, and they can come back to you with what they think. Ideally, the people that you talk to are already in academic institutions or nonprofits or are stakeholders of the stuff that you're trying to build. Unfortunately, this means that a lot of the time you might spend trying to do independent research is filled with just emailing people or trying to meet people to do collaborations with, but this is fine. And I actually think is the main thing that you should start with when trying to go down this journey. So there are a lot of ways to do this. Um, one way is to just cold email people. And I literally just did this for like a year trying to just email people that I thought would be open to supervising someone doing work independently. And that's how I met the supervisor that I'm working with currently on my computational chemistry project. Another way is to like go to conferences. So like last, we last weekend, I went to Effective Altruism Global in London to talk with people about problems in biosecurity. And I, I have some ideas of some projects that I wanna do because of that. Um, meeting people in person is also good. Like uh, six months ago, I, I went up to a university that I was working with just to solidify like that relationship. Um, in trying to do research. So yeah, don't be a quack. And to not be a quack, you have to really search, search out the experience of people like already with research experience or who are already in institutions that are willing to offer feedback on stuff that you're doing. Okay, so in my blog, I've actually posted a bunch of different project ideas that I think part-timers could reasonably tackle uh, outside of their full-time job in the area of biosecurity. And I wanted to in the future, spend more time posting up similar ideas on quantum chemistry and biophysics that I think part-timers could reasonably do as well. So that's in the link below. And the last thing, whilst I am generally skeptical of listening to people trying to give advice to me, and I understand if you are too, um, if you are really interested in trying to do science outside of your full-time career, but wanted more of a personalized advice or consultation or just someone to like, uh, speak out loud with, uh, I am available. And currently right now I'm trying to assess the economic value of me actually speaking to people and giving advice on how they might do science outside of their full-time job, either as like a hobby or maybe like they want to do it more seriously with, uh, with the institution. So I am currently charging for it just to assess the value add that I can bring. Uh, if you do that, then we can also just talk about like, how maybe the current skill set you have could be amenable to other areas in science that require research on. And also, uh, I might be able to give you like more personalized project ideas that you could work on, or and also strategies to just find people to collaborate with. Um, or if you just want to talk, either way. So the link to do that is also in the description below. That being said, uh, most of the stuff that I post will continue to be free, especially like my free list of project ideas. And also I'll just, my Substack is free to subscribe to. So if you want to like keep up with me, just look at that.